Instagram influencer found dead in a Richmond apartment. The body of the man accused of killing her also inside. ABC 13's Shelly Childers is live with what we know tonight. Shelly. Eric, she was known as Mercedes Moore on Instagram. Millions of people followed her, but police tell us it was inside her Richmond apartment behind me where she was found dead inside. On Instagram, she was known as Miss Mercedes Moore. Her adult content followed by 2.6 million people, including superstar Snoop Dogg and Megan Thee Stallion. Her real name was Janae Gagnier. The 33-year-old was found dead inside her upscale apartment in Richmond, Texas. Police say they were called to this quiet complex for a welfare check Sunday. Inside the apartment, they found Mercedes Moore and another man believed to be the suspect who killed her, Kevin Alexander Accordo. He was also dead, police calling it a murder-suicide. Investigators say there is no relationship between Mercedes and the suspect, telling us his last known address was in Florida. Neighbors we spoke with called the complex quiet and secure. It'd be kind of surprising to know that this was an intruder, someone that broke into the house because uh, I wouldn't think that that would happen here. Police have not said how the two died, telling us the cause of death will come from the medical examiner. In Richmond, Shelley Childers, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Sometimes it's best to just sit back, be quiet, and wait. And many of us want to be first but many of us don't care about being accurate. I'm pretty sure by now you've heard various stories about 33-year-old Janae Gagnier, a.k.a. Mercedes Moore, and how she met a very brutal, untimely demise. And this video here is to give highlight on her family's perspective, respect them, and the loved one that they've lost, speak about the questions we all want answers to, and what we could learn about ourselves from this tragedy, because there's always a lesson in every loss. What's going on everybody and welcome to Rondell's Unpopular Opinion and welcome to the channel. Now I'm gonna try to really enter this story with care being that I just recently lost a loved one, not even two weeks ago. So I can wholeheartedly feel where this family is coming from. And this is why I really want to give the angle and the perspective of the family during this very difficult time because I'm not sure how many content creators and people who are in the media are kind of really highlighting what they have to say. So on my platform, the family and their opinions and their perspectives are definitely going to have the floor. Now, literally not even a week, but days before we learned of Mercedes passing, we also learned of another Instagram model and influencer who actually passed away also. And her name was Rayla Ferreira, and she was from Brazil, 20 years old and shot in the face after leaving a party. So this has become a sadly an epidemic where we have young influencers and our young girls and women actually succumbing to a very untimely demise very violently. The news clip that you just heard about Mercedes was preliminary and it wasn't a lot of information out around the time that that news clip was released. However, people continued to run with many narratives and it had got to a point where the family had to start speaking out and they were not happy at all. You had people who were literally going over to Mercedes' Instagram page after learning that she had passed through the blogs and they were writing the most disgusting comments in her comment section and i'm not even going to show that here out of respect for her her family members literally had to go on their own social media platforms and make it known that mercedes is still a person despite how you perceive her through social media she does have a family who loves her she does have people who care about her and this is not a time for the ratchetness and it is not a time for people to be downright disgusting it had got so bad to the point where her father, Mark Gagnier, had to release a statement via Twitter and state that the false statements put out by social media and several news outlets is alarming. The death of my daughter is still under investigation. Until we have all the facts, no statement will be made. 
please respect the family hashtag mercedes more so it's been a few days since this took place and the medical examiner did come to a conclusion as to what really happened to mercedes so take a listen to the local texas clip of what research was found in her case Eric, good evening. This story, it really has become somewhat of an international story. Mercedes Moore's story being told everywhere. And people, so many people have been honoring and remembering her. People in high places such as Drake, who released a new album today. And take a look at what he posted to his story here. A tribute to Mercedes Moore, letting his millions and millions of fans know that this album is one of, she is one of two people that this album is dedicated to. Meanwhile, her friends and family are getting ready for a tough weekend of finding goodbyes from kicking in his daughter's door only to find her dead to the daunting task of cleaning out her apartment filled with her killer's blood and his writings on the wall and now preparing for a final goodbye you never want to see your kid die, and i want to i want to die before all my kids so it's been hard for Janae Gagne's father, Mark Gagne, and for her mother, Janetta Groves, losing their beloved daughter. But where they are today is ensuring their daughter's memorial service is so special. For this beautiful, beautiful person that's not here. Meanwhile, investigators continue to search phone records to piece together this case. How did Janae's killer, Kevin Accorto, find her? How did he get into her apartment? And why did he choke her to death before stabbing himself? As again, we still have an open investigation on who this person was and where he came from so we still ask for the respect that the family deserves in that regard and to understand that we too have have to have closure and some things need to happen from the investigation side of the house and as a family our grieving process so according to this news clip the medical examiner did determine that mercedes was indeed strangled to death and that her father actually walked in on this scene of seeing his daughter lifeless body laying in her apartment, which is very sad. Now, I don't know what's going on lately, but it seems as though that parents are burying their children and the cycle of life is not taking place where children are burying their parents. But H-Town Sierra, another Instagram model who was also close to Mercedes, stated and reiterated her parents and her family's sentiments and stated that Mercedes did not have a sugar daddy or a pimp like the rumors on social media were initially stating. And she went on to state that Mercedes never did. She was not robbed. She did not have HIV, which is completely something that is extreme to even put on someone. And she also stated that Mercedes did not have COVID. She was not in an accident and she was indeed murdered. And once more information comes out, then the family will release the details. Now, the second news clip that you saw speaking on this is deriving from an interview that this news reporter actually did with Mercedes' parents. And this interview was about 20 minutes long. I will be leaving the link to this entire interview in the description of this video so you can check it all out for yourself. However, I feel as though that a lot of imperative things were said in this interview within the first seven to eight minutes, which will be featured in this video, all right? So take a listen to what her parents had to say, and I will BRB with the rest of my commentary. When I was contacted, I'm here to set the story straight, let everybody know what happened. Janae was very loved, mm -hmm. and she's probably loved more than we uh, would have thought of. I knew my daughter had a large following, and I knew she had some friends that, uh, you know, in not high places, but friends that were influential. I didn't know all the love that she had, and hopefully we're able to, you know, give her a memorial or or do something for her in a way that everybody is, is happy with and everybody that everybody will be able to have closure like right. we want closure. Yeah, we just want a respectful, respectful uh, service. Um, again, she's a human being and we just were not wanting to see the disrespectful comments that were on social media. It was horrific. Tell us about the side of Janae that 
most people don't know. People who were just a fan of her, loved her beauty, her pictures, her expression on Instagram. Tell us about the Janae that you all know. She's my baby. <laughs> she was so kind. I mean, she was just always, I will say she was very, very protective. Very protective of us. I'll say right. that. Well, she, she was definitely so. protective of her mom. <laughs> I mean, I could never say anything, not that I would, anything about her mom without Janae saying dad <laughs> um, or anybody actually without saying dad. Um, Janae was her mama's baby. Janae was that attitude and that directness was me. Janae was funny, she was goofy, and she was always a good time. Mm -hmm. um, the whole family, I mean, is Janae going to be around? Is Janae going to be around? Is Janae going to yep. be around? Because Janae was just the life of the party, even with the family. Mm -hmm. um, getting her to do things, <laughs> I had to climb down her all the time, but that was my kid, and I loved her. Yeah, just a, just a son, a ray of sun. She's just fun. Fun to hang out with. Hard headed, but that was my kid, and I loved her. <laughs> Mark, for you, and you know, you just said this earlier, you always kept Janae close. She lived about two miles from you, and although she, you know, she liked to party, and obviously not Richmond is not where the party is right. happening, right? Um, you kept her close. You wanted to protect her, and to be the one to find her after she had been attacked, and knowing that you couldn't be there, although it's not your fault, how do you kind of deal with that pain? I, I told you. And my, my youngest daughter and Janae are close, and she took it bad. And I, she would normally call me if like Janae um, hadn't, Janae could not answer her call. And me and my girlfriend had left for two weeks. Janae called me before I left on vacation and uh, said, Daddy, I'm moving. I need you to uh, help me move. And I've been helped her move so many dang times and back hurts. But, uh, and when you get back, I'm moving to a new house. I need you to cook me dinner for the week. And that was always the joke with Janae. Janae wanted dinner every <laughs> every other week. And she wanted smothered chicken for some odd reason. She couldn't let me eat. I think she's burnt out on seafood. But um, Janae, or London called me and said, Janae hasn't talked to me since Thursday. And then her friends, um, we're at the place. I knew something was wrong. I knew at that time something was wrong. Um, I wouldn't have kicked the door in if I didn't know something was wrong. And what I saw did not surprise me at that moment because I, I knew something was wrong. That's not my daughter. She would call me all the time, talk about, Daddy, I'm checking mm -hmm. on you. And I'd be like, no, I'm checking on you. Mm -hmm. You know, That was our little joke. And I knew something was wrong as soon as I got there. Yeah. She didn't just not answer. That's not. Yeah, she does not not answer. At least her parents and her sisters. Yeah. She she was always responsive, so that was strange. So when I got the call that a friend hadn't heard from her and Mark hadn't heard, and, okay, what's going on? So that's when I talked to Mark. And, Have you been able yeah. to stop thinking about what she may have went through? No, that's horrific. Being strangled to death is a horrible way to die and my baby's gone and it was horrible to even think about it and I try not to think about it my first night I got we got here at 3 in the morning me and some of my good friends I mean I got good friends for 30 years went to the place because I kept the door and so we had to after the police left we had to uh, secure the door and stuff so we went in just grabbed a couple of things grabbed some paperwork and stuff secured the door I mean it was just disgusting inside um, and I prepared everybody because I had been inside um, when when we left I got home that night if I slept an hour that might have been it because when the detective told me that she would have been strangled. That's all I can think in my mind is I did not want my daughter to go out in any kind of pain or suffering or any kind of traumatic anything. And I would have been happy with the thought in my mind that 
he pushed her or she fell down the stairs because it's quick. And I know that's a bad thought, but I did not want my daughter to be in any kind of struggle, fight, or pain. So I don't know how the guy got into the place because my it was locked up tightly, and my daughter does not open the door for anybody. As short as she is, she still gets up to that peephole and would look through and make sure it was me. I mean, I had to call my daughter, Janae, let me in. Janae, let me in. So I know, I don't know how he found her. Um, and I don't know how all this happened. That's the only part that I'm waiting on. Um, I know what happened. I know my daughter's dead. And all this other stuff went on social media about she was shot and robbed and all the other stuff. You should be ashamed of yourselves for letting out false information just to get the story and not coming to us and or waiting for the real story. Right. Let us grieve. We needed to grieve initially. Her dad found her. Can you imagine what that's like? So for him to have to see that and us process it, he and I to be able to, to talk about, you know, what are the next steps, we would have appreciated at least that respect. And we didn't get that. And so, again, the, the social media discussions and all the ins and outs of that, that was hurtful. And we're here to set this, the record straight. She didn't know this guy. He was a random person, and he killed her, and he killed himself. And this is where we are at this point right now. And we want to celebrate her life. We will do that. So that's what we're here to do. Now, as a parent, listening to someone's child being strangled literally breaks my heart. And, of course, the people have questions just like her parents. Now, we want to know why was Mercedes constantly moving? If you listen to the dad during the interview, he did state that she moved so much that it made his back hurt. Did she constantly have a problem with men harassing or stalking her? How did this man really know Mercedes? She may not have known him, but he definitely knew her. Or maybe someone could have sent him. How did he know where Mercedes lived? which was pretty much the gated and quiet community on the outskirts of Houston. And how did he get into her apartment? Did anyone hear any commotion or yelling or screaming? These are the things that everyone pretty much wants to know. Now, as I stated initially in this video, there are lessons in every loss, all right? And the lesson to be learned here is that this is the bad side and the cons of notoriety through the internet. Stalking has been able to take on a whole new form and level since the rise of social media with GPS being built into our smartphones and people constantly tagging their locations. Our lives have literally become an open book and we initially joined these apps to connect to people, but now people have used these apps to build empires and brands. Social media has completely even changed the way women view themselves and their bodies. It's even influenced the fashion and the beauty industry and how as humans, we become enticed with what we perceive to be reality and not realizing that social media is not real life, all right? but only a tool to display a certain aspect of our lives. We find ourselves getting caught up in it and we do not need a Netflix documentary to tell us that social media can be an addiction, a gift, and a curse. We also need to be careful of who we associate ourselves with and we cannot be around everyone and everyone cannot be around us or in our spaces. Now, here's what I do believe. I do believe that social media was a gift and a curse for Mercedes. I do believe it was a gift because it allowed her to build a brand for herself. However, I do believe that it was a curse because it did not give her peace. And her father alluded to this in his interview when he stated that my monthly conversation is, Janae, you have all these followers, some probably because they love you, some because they like your look some more crazy and some more obsessed all right so he did state that he stated that to his daughter he did tell the reporter in the interview that his daughter was constantly moving so i believe that janae has had this problem before where she probably has had stalkers in the past and this one tragically ended where she was actually murdered i'm not going to sit here and say that my belief is an absolute fact as to what happened to this young woman who was actually the same age as me but what i can tell you 
is is that someone was definitely operating on demon time this was someone who was watching her this is someone who probably had been around her even when she did not know it y'all okay but something about this story is definitely eerie and very strange with the writing on the wall and i do hope that her family gets justice and that our questions definitely get answered but that's all i got for you guys on this one thank you guys so much for tuning into this video and shout out to you for making it all the way to the end i love y'all as i always say y'all take care and y'all be well peace